Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We are travelers on a cosmic journey. Gautam Buddha said, the existence of our is as transient as autumn clouds. We see a beautiful cloud and all of a sudden it is gone. A lifetime is like a flash 
of lighting in the sky. I would like everybody to pray with me this Buddhist chant to say, may I become all at all times, both now and forever, a protector for those without protection, a guide for those who have lost their way, a ship for those oceans to cross, and a sanctuary for those in danger. May I be a lamp for those in need of light, a refuse for those in need of shelter, and a servant to all those in need. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajeem Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahmanir rahim Malik yawm Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina na'amta alayhim Qayri al-maghdubi alayhim Walat dhalim قل هو الله أحد الله السمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ونبئنكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع والنقص من الأموال والأنفسكم والمسرات والبشر الذين إذا أصابتكم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون May God bless Dr. Kalam so and grant him the highest place in heaven in Arabic called Jannatul Firdaus and may grant his survivors both the nations of India and his family the patience to bear the great loss. Amen. सभी रोए तू हंसता जा अब्दुल कलाम राष्ट्रपति ने ऐसा जीवन जिया 
आज सारे श्रद्धालु जन उनके डेथ पर आंसू बहा रहे हैं और उनसे मिलने का मुझे भी मौका मिला था कर्नाटक में जब सर्वधर्म सम्मेलन हुआ था उस समय राष्ट्रपति जी यहाँ बैठे थे उनके पास में मेरी चेयर थी हम दोनों की बात चल रही थी शिक्षा के बारे में उन्होंने मुझसे कहा था कि समी जी आज शिक्षा जगत में फिजिकल डेवलपमेंट हो रहा है इंटेलेक्चुअल डेवलपमेंट हो रहा है लेकिन इमोशनल और स्पिरिचुअल ग्रोथ जो होनी चाहिए वो नहीं हो रही है उसके लिए मेडिटेशन टेक्निक सबको सीखनी चाहिए और पूज्य गुरुदेव आचार्य महाप्रज्ञ जी के साथ में उनका बहुत इंटेंसिव क्लोज रिलेशन था वो जब भी जाते थे गुरुदेव के पास में आते थे और ऐसे चाहे अपने प्रश्नों को पूछते थे उनका समाधान पाते थे तो मैं ऐसा ही कहूँगी इतना महान व्यक्ति आज संसार से चला गया और दुनिया में अपना नाम रोशन करके गया है उस मंगल आत्मा के प्रति मंगल कामना करती हूँ वो जहाँ कहीं भी है वो आगे से आगे अपने जीवन में प्रगति करते हुए अपने लक्ष्य को पाए मोक्ष को पाए इसी आशा के साथ वो आए Ramesh Gujarani to say prayers from Sikhism. As you heard from him on the video, he orbited now 83 times around the sun, and his last book was Transcendent 
the journey, my spiritual journey with Sri Pramukh Swami. That was the book and he was supposed to launch on August 9th in Hyderabad. I was supposed to be in that program with him. Fortunately, he's not here. Now, he writes in that book, Pramukh Swami directed him to how to be in the God's orbit. So now, after orbiting around the sun for 83 years, now he is in the God's orbit. With that, I would like all of you to rise. Let's have a two-minute silence in his honor and offer our Shritanjali. Thank you. says a lot about uh, his, you know, stature, his willingness, and what kind of man he is. I thank you all for responding to the quick phone calls and coming up on Sunday and, you know, paying a tribute today. So we are gathered here today, like our kids said, not to mourn, to celebrate. 
See, there is a difference between mourning and celebration. Certain people, you know, go there, we cry for one day and we are sad for a few days and then we forget. But celebration is always is a continuous process. His life, his each phase in his life is a motivation to all the individuals, including the you know the students, mothers, parents, and all the nations of the India. If you look at his biography, he simply born in you know, Rameshwar, Tamil Nadu, on 15th October 1931, whose financial conditions were very modest at best, but still he did not give up on the education. He studied, you know, he went to uh, small colleges at the beginning, and he was not happy with the way he is. He moved to Madras University, and then he set an you know, example until he died how to learn and how to teach. Because on July 27th, when we all uh, look at his videos, he was teaching the students at the time of his death. So fortunate. And we are all proud to say that we are Indians. And we are all belong to uh, his you know, uh, era. That's what we all need to be proud about it. His drive for education is unparalleled. After he graduated from St. Joseph's College in 1954, uh, he was not satisfied, like I said. He left uh, for Madras later and next year to the study aerospace engineering and took up the position of chief scientist at the aeronautical development establishment of defense research and development organization from 1992 until 99 Kalam, Dr. Kalam was appointed as the chief scientific advisor to the prime minister and the secretary of defense research and development organization it was during that time the Kalam served as the chief project co coordinator for the Procron 2 nuclear test. If you go back and remember, that's when the whole world looked at India. Because when we do the Procron test, that's when the world paying attention to the India, what the power we have and who is the man behind it. So during that time, he succeeded. After that, he succeeded as a 11th president of uh, India. So he was uh, there as a president from 2002 until 2007. And he called as a missile man of India because of this Mokpok run test. So we all need to be proud and we all need to be, you know, acknowledge his uh, accomplishments. He's not a just great scientist and he's not a government official, but also an inventor. If you all remember, if you go back to the history, in 1999, 98, Dr. Kalam, along with cardiologist Somaraju, developed a low-cost coronary stent called the Kalam Raju stent. Again, recently, in 2012, Dr. Kalam also developed a rugged tablet computer for healthcare user in rural areas. That's called Kalam Raju tablet. So he is not only a teacher, he is not only a scientist, he not only uh, attained a highest civilian position in, in uh, India, and also he accomplished so many you know, awards, if you look at it, Padma Bhushan, Padma Vibhushan, and then up to Bharat Ratna. So this man is an example to each individual. His life is a lesson, his act is a motivation, and his character is a guide. He always break the conventional norms. He would reach out to the people, leaving protocols aside, and he is the becoming the first people's president. That's how we all call him as a people's president because whenever we go to any public functions, we forget all the protocols, he goes and meet the kids and he engages with the, the students and the public. That's why we call him as a, a people's president. 
He acclaimed lot of collection of accolades in his life. He was granted the Padma Bhushan in 1981, the Padma Vibhushan in 1990, and the Bharat Ratna in 1997. That is the India's highest civilian awards for his contributions in modernizing government defense technology. We all need to understand that. It's the most important thing that uh, he did for India. That's why Bharat recognized him and then gave the Bharat Ratna. Not only India recognized him. Among his international awards, if you look at it, the Warm Carmen Wings Award from the California Institute of Technology and also King Charles II Medal from Royal Society of the United Kingdom and he also received over 40 honorary doctorates over dozen universities across the world. So that's the kind of man he's got. Dr. Kalam, despite how simple a man he may have appeared to be, he has left one of the biggest footprints known to mankind. He has touched the hearts and souls of every Indian on this planet and will forever be known as the People President. Abdul Kalam was a man of simplicity and through his pure, selfless heart, has simplified the nation's problems. Again, he said, it's, we are not here to mourn, we are going to celebrate his life. We you know, always remember uh, his work towards the humanity. His life is a lesson, his act is a motivation, and I'm fortunate to meet him when he was in uh, Washington, D.C., May 2013. We shared the days and lead India organized a uh, meet and greet with the youth. All the students and everybody thinking, oh, President of India is coming, and how it is, what kind of protocols, how difficult it is. But when he interacted with the kids, they, they feel like they are like another, you know, simple man. So how simple that person is, so there's no words to describe. So again, I thank you all for coming and what a magnificent show was, we will miss you dearly. May God bless the memory of Dr. Kalam. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Srini. Such a wonderful introduction of the glorious experiences and uh, accomplishments of our beloved People's President, Dr. Kalam. So in the midst of the rapidly developing and reforming India, we lost a great man who gave the direction called Vision 2020 for India. It was approved by the parliament during the Vajpayee government and his second term did not materialize for various political reasons, but the legacy continued. The Vision 2020, which wanted to see India as a developed nation by year 2020 by engaging the power of youth. And the brainchild of the Vision 2020 is the Lead India 2020 Foundation. His objective was to transform and empower 55% of the youth, over 640 million youth of India into responsible citizens and engage them in developing the nation. That's where my personal interaction, my personal journey with this great man started in the year 2007, November. I come from a district in Andhra Pradesh, in the combined state of Andhra Pradesh then called Karim Nagar. They did a massive Lead India Aapbado Deshko Bado training program for 250,000 children in one round. He as president, the child, for the first time came to Karim Nagar to witness the graduation ceremony of the 250,000 children who underwent the Lead India training. And the primary objective of the Lead India training is to enable them as change agents by engaging the teachers, parents and students, followed by a field work. Each one teach them to eliminate illiteracy, plant 10 trees to protect the environment, Turn off bad habits in 10 people, sanitation, nutrition, health education. There's about 10 different items he wanted to 
those children who are change agents go into their neighborhoods and transform them. It's like a chain reaction. Fortunately, the current government has adopted many of those programs. And the next major part of his vision 2020 was a program called PURA, providing urban amenities to rural areas. If you see in the United States, no matter where you go, you have all the basic amenities. You have a school, you have a hospital, and you have a police station, and you have a, all those amenities. You don't miss them. Whereas in India, if you go to any rural place, it's not available. You need to go to the nearest town or the city to get those basic things. His idea was to have electronic connectivity to the rural areas, health connectivity, education connectivity, and energy connectivity. Instead of going to the grid, he wanted to have alternate energy like solar, wind, and biomass, and so on and so forth. And ultimately, he believed that will give them the financial connectivity to reduce the migration of youth and the rural population to the cities. So that was his mission. And today's government, in the form of electronic connectivity, they called this Digital India. And now they are being implemented by the current government. And the telemedicine and so on and so forth. I'm very happy to announce that the current government of our Honorable Prime Minister Modi has adapted some of these things to implement, to transform India holistically, addressing the rural areas. So having learned about his vision and mission and roadmap for the nation, in 2008 March, I happened to go to India and we were trying to honor a person who is of that stature as Shanti Sri, who was trying to bring peace and harmony to the world. From our Ipanapali Charitable Foundation, I wrote to him and he invited me to meet on March 8, 2008 at 8 p.m. in his official residence in Delhi. So that's how my journey started. So when I proposed my thing and he said, Hariji, the lead India is in a very infant stage. Let's set aside this Shanti Sri. But looks like you are a good worker. I want you to volunteer for the lead India movement. That's how he recruited me on March 8, 2008, around 8 p.m. in Delhi. Since then, we rapidly accelerated that thing. And he was coming to Wharton School to address as a chief guest for the Indian event. On March 24th of 2008, he was in Philadelphia. On the way back to India on March 26th in Crown Plaza at JFK Airport, we formally launched the USA Lead India chapter in his presence. And since then I've been volunteering and he appointed me in 2012 March again as trustee of his prestigious Lead India Foundation and also overseas coordinator and he, his direction was to arrange there is about 30 million accomplished non-resident Indians living abroad. Let's engage them, let's connect them to their schools and villages and see what kind of transformation they can bring and adapt a school, adapt a village under various programs, especially the Pura program. And since then, we wanted to promote that. We registered the Lead India organization in the US and it's a 501c3 organization. And Dr. Kalam launched the global website and we all interacted with him in May of 2013 in Washington, D.C. And since then the journey began. So now, as we all stand here, and I personally and sincerely request on behalf of the Lead India, please, please keep his dreams alive and let's see India as a developed nation by engaging the power of youth. He believes the ignited minds of the youth is the most powerful strength on the earth, above the earth, and below the earth. No force can stop them. So with this, I would like to recite one of his poems that he used to do whenever he interacted with the students. And would you repeat after me, please? This is a righteousness in the heart. That's a poem that he, his favorite poem. Please repeat after me. Wherever there is righteousness, righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in the character. When there is beauty in the character, there is harmony in home. When there is harmony in the home, 
there is an order in the nation when there is order in the nation there is peace in the world so this was this is what he was trying to accomplish and there is a huge responsibility on the lead india and all of you to carry to establish this peace in this world so i would like to invite again the lead india board and i would like to formally present to be reconstituted and president mr sinwas ganagoni rajesh guti secretary srinivas goloru vice president kishor awari treasurer and we have an esteemed advisory board dr nandu balija mr sridhar chilra assemblyman and former deputy speaker upendra chirukula and dr raja rao bandaru and dr rilo horacio who is a transplant surgeon and he is a, worked very closely to organize a lead india leadership summit on affordable health care we are fortunate to have him here and we have our directors anurag jain arun shriram neni damu gedla krishna siddhada lakh chepore नरेश चिंतन चरू प्रसाद ठेंजरला राज गोलीकर संतोष पादुरी सत्या नेमाना सुधाकर उपला सुरेंदर वर्मा एंड वंशी कपोवरपू एंड वेंकी सडगोपन they are shouldering a huge responsibility it's not easy to continue the mission but they are dedicated and committed and i have seen mahatma gandhi i have not seen mahatma gandhi but i am fortunate to have worked with dr kalam who is the mahatma of our generation so my journey started with dr kalam by offering him a shanti sri honor for trying to set establish peace on this world so I still have that memento with me and we were planning to do that in the fall of 2015 in the US and unfortunately we have physically he is not present and I would like to have Dr Shanti to bring the Shanti Sri honor and offer and I would like to request the Mahatma Gandhi grandson and also Dr Ekne Subramanyam and hr shah and pradeep kothari please come to the stage i to the lotus feet of the girl So please help me welcome the students of Indra Dixit to perform this tributary dance.
ఐడియాలు చిన్న ప్రదర్శన అండి ఈ ఆక్టర్ టెస్ట్ హోప్ఫుల్లీ కన్వేస్ ద మీనింగ్ దట్ ఈచ్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ మ్యాన్ ఆఫ్ అస్ హౌ ఎవర్ హై హీ హ్యాస్ షీ హ్యాస్ రైజన్ ఇన్ లైఫ్ బీట్ గుడ్ లుకింగ్ హ్యాండ్సమ్ ఆర్ ఎంత పేరు వచ్చినా ఎంత ఎదిగినా మనం గురు అనుచరణంలోనే ఉండాలని అది మనకి మళ్ళీ మళ్ళీ గుర్తు చేస్తుంది ఈ గురు ఆష్టకం దీన్ని ఆది శంకరాచార్య గారి వారి కాంపోజిషన్ చిన్న ప్రదర్శన దీన్ని ప్రజెంట్ చేసేవారు పిల్లలు నవ్య జాగర్లమూడి పూజ గుమదవల్లి అనన్య చందూరు నిఖిల ఓబినేని అండ్ వి ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ శ్రీ సిస్టర్ రాగ సింగిరెడ్డి అనన్య హిమజ రెడ్డి అండ్ అక్షిత సింగాది థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ ఉపేంద్ర శ్రీ కూడా అండ్ చైర్మన్ ఆఫ్ ద అసోసియేషన్ హరి డిపాన్ పాలి his name is a crazy name you know i <laughs> because why his name is crazy because his spelling i was looking the spelling hari i can understand everybody know the hari all over world wide but ipana pali in the anybody name you can't see three like uh, you know like double you can see two at the point you can't see the three p p p that's the crazy you know e p p p three three times so his name is crazy but he's not he's a great guy he's doing great job and uh, you know what see his vision doctor ka vision jo tha usko support karne ke liye wo kar rahe congratulations god bless you my friend i had in my past experience with uh, doctor abdul kalam i met him few times in my in his life and uh, when we talk with him like he was very very friendly with him I'm not going to take your time, but I'm going to tell you he came to Bharati Vidya Bhav and he spent the time with us. He came for only half an hour, but he spent another two hours because the children was there. And he was talking with children like close to two hours. So his vision was, let's do something for the youth, for new generation. New generation is the main thing in the life. That's the, his vision is. and we have to support for that reason and you know pm prime minister narendra bhai modi talking about he is uh, you know he is a was a great person and indian he is a great uh, he, he lost great scientist in the our life and also former prime minister paul him he or lost his life for defense technology so he is a great great nuclear scientist, uh, scientist aerospace and i have a one experience that i want to tell you in 2005 when he was a president and just you mentioned here about uh, pramukh swami ji maharaj because he came to unke utkarthan ke liye aksar dham ka utkarthan ke liye he was in the aksar dham and he did right? and then he was walking and pramukh swami don't speak english at all you know and you say gujarati pramukh swami ne bola pramukh swami ne gujarati ఆ మరో హస్ము ఆలో చే ఓకే ఆ మరో హస్ము కాదు మీన్స్ హస్ము కేస్ ఇయర్ ఫ్రమ్ యూఎస్ సో ఎస్ అబ్దుల్ కలాం సాహెబ్ బోలా మనకి గుజరాతీ ఆవడే చే ఉపేంద్ర చౌకల టు కమ్ ఆన్ టు ద డాన్స్ టు సే ఫ్యూ వర్డ్స్ ఉపేంద్ర చౌకల ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ఎవరీబడి ఇస్ ఎట్ ద బ్యాక్ సో ప్లీజ్ టేక్ ఎ సీట్ వి గోన్ ఫినిష్ ద ప్రోగ్రామ్ సూన్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఆల్ ద డిగ్నిటరీస్ షేర్ देयर థాట్స్ everyone in the back please take a seat thank you very much um uh, sinwas garu and also hari prapali and uh, mr raj mohan gandhi thank you welcome to new jersey uh, distinguished guests and uh, friends i think what can you say about uh, dr abdul kalam i was looking at uh, kalam you can also pronounce as kalam kalam means time time never dies time moves forward and he has set up this uh, de- deadline that uh, one of the deadlines is uh, 2020 so he started the organization lead 2020 foundation and trying to see how we can uh, transform the 640 million youth in india as, and also trying to create uh, suburban areas like what he is talking about creating suburban areas like the united states where you don't have to go to urban areas all the facilities that are available in the urban areas are available in the suburbia 
I think that is uh, also is, is a man of vision, and he has uh, really touched many of you. May, many of you have met him. He's so simplistic person, and uh, when you meet him, you don't think that uh, he's the president of uh, United uh, in, in India. And uh, from 2002, he became the president. And uh, I think transforming India is a major challenge. I think uh, he has taken up the task, and he wanted to. Uh, each and every one of us to follow that vision, trying to see how we can move India forward. And there are many things that we can do. I think we can do a lot of things from here as uh, NRIs and trying to encourage the youth, you know, promoting the, the culture, the knowledge, the wisdom, the Vedic knowledge that we have from India and try speaking the language, Hindi and other Indian languages and try promoting them so that way they get inspired and uh, try to think about India. A lot of times people uh, forget and you know, especially when you're born here you give up the language and all that. I think that's what uh, if you can do that and creating that smart villages in India, uh, trying to help out uh, various uh, rural communities in India, I think that's what uh, we can do going forward. I think uh, today's uh, uh, Sraddhanjali is very important. We remember him, we cherish his memories, we celebrate his life. But at the same time, we have to go forward. Just like the time keeps going, time never waits for anybody. So let's take up the challenge and let's make Lead India 2020 a success. Thank you very much. Sina Subramanian, uh, he is the chairman of uh, HATCC, Hindu American Temple and Cultural Center. I request him to come on to the desk and share his views. Thank you, Sina Respect of Akhman Gandhi Ji, Hari Ji, all friends. We are assembled here to do a Shraddhanjali to a great human being. People don't have to become great only by doing very great things. They do even the smallest thing in the greatest way. And that was the spirit Dr. Kalam showed right from his childhood as a paper boy. When his cousin used to throw the bundle of papers in the train station in Rameshwaram before the dawn of up every day, he would be the first one to collect those papers and distribute it to his customers before dawn, so that he will be the first one to give the news of the world to all his clients. That is day after day after day. That perseverance and hard work, that dedication and the commitment and the respect to the whatever work one was doing, that one, that makes people great. Manushyatvam, Mumukshutvam, Mahapurusha Samsrayaha, all these three, to be born as a human being, Manishyatva, Mumukshutva, to strive always to raise to the level of a Mumukshu, a person who always desires to reach the final ultimate goal of justifying the human birth, namely Moksha, and Mahapurusha Samsrayaha, to have the association of Mahapurushas, Mahatmas. These three are considered Durlabham. Durlabham, Prayamevaitad, all these three things, Devanugraha Ketukam, they can be accomplished only when there is a divine will. For whatever we do, two factors are required. One is Prayatram, our effort. Another is the divine will, Devam factor. And when these two things go together, anything can be accomplished by anyone. And he stood an example to prove that to us. Commitment to whatever we do, lived as a karma yogi. And the simplicity, the way which he conducted himself and related to everybody. He lived like a manukshu, a person who lived and lived with divine values, a dharmic values, righteous values. And that is what he imparted to us. He is being a great president, he is being a great scientist, he is being a person who encouraged all the kids. He is being a person, a people's president, a missile man, a great nuclear hero. They are all great accomplishments which all stemmed from 
the fundamental factor that, that he had, namely righteousness and to live the values of a good human being. We now feel we have lost him. We never lose any such people at all. They live through their memories in us. They live through their accomplishments in us. Whenever we see anything in, in, in the nation, in the human world, in the human community, which commun communicates some value, compassion, whatever it is, we remember them. That is how they live in us. That is how they inspire us. And this is not a Shruddhanjali that we have to think of this day and then wait for another such day in the year to do another Shruddhanjali. This is a thing we live now every moment in thinking about him and the inspiration that he has provided to us. And the what can I give movement serves as an inspiration for all of us. His Excellency Dr. Kalam was called People's President for a reason. He cared about people and his devotion to helping society will be long remembered. His Excellency Dr. Kalam's dedication to science, his drive to achieve what he felt was right and his unwavering commitment to the people of India is truly commendable. Again, my deepest regrets, I cannot join your tribute in person and my sincere condolences for a loss that was felt around the world. That is from that. Initially, he resisted, but finally we convinced him to come onto the dais. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, if my belief is, if uh, Dr. Atul Kalam had been here today, he would have been very proud of the youngsters uh, who spoke and his team here, so he would have been very glad about that. That's one comment I'd like to make. Um, now, you've in insisted that I should say a word or two. And I'm an old man, and I will exercise my freedom of speech. <laughs> it will not be long, but I will speak very frankly. Um, now, all of us here, or many of us here, are connected with India very deeply. We're also connected with the United States very deeply. We love India. We are proud of India. But I have one complaint. We don't know our fellow Indians. We love India, we are proud of India, but we don't know India. We love America. We are proud of America, but we don't know our fellow Americans. So I believe that Dr. Abdul Kalam's spirit would want, would encourage me to say today, love your India, be proud of India, but know your fellow Indians. Now, you mentioned so many things about Dr. Abdul Kalam, but you haven't mentioned where he came from, which part of India he came from. You, you know, Rameshwaram is the place. But what about the people? Who are the people? Now, yes, we all know that he was a wonderful Muslim human being. He was a wonderful, he, 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 respected, he respected the Hindu thought. He respected Hindu saints and seers. But what about this community that he came from? The Muslims of that coastal part of South India have been there for how long? Well before the Mughals came. Well before the Sultanate came to Delhi, the Muslim community of the coastal parts of Kerala and Tamil Nadu had started to grow. It is from that amazing community that Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam comes from. This is only one small aspect. Know your India, know your America, honor Dr. Abdul Kalam. Thank you. A school called Lead India Bharat Ratna School. He wanted to fundamentally change the way we educate our children. So in 2013, that idea was from one year concept to construction to inauguration. The school was launched on June 20th, 2013 in Hyderabad suburbs. And he was the, supposed to be the chief guest and keynote speaker. And he was kind enough and I was very honored for me to deliver the keynote address in his presence. So after that, he wanted to have a Lead India Global Leadership Summit to have affordable quality health care, affordable quality education, and he added one more to it. Let's make spiritual families. 
So now we have an esteemed guest here, Dr. Rilo Horacio, who is a stem cell transplant surgeon working currently at North Shore LIJ, but he originally comes from University of Chicago, and he was one of the advisors to organize this summit. Please, I would like to welcome Dr. Rilo Horacio. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here. You perhaps uh, ask yourself what is an Indian guy doing here. But I think that we should honor Dr. Kalam in the sense that he summarized the commonality of humanity that is so difficult to, uh, to summarize. And uh, I am Argentinian by birth from Lebanese descent, but I was lucky enough to live around the world I live in Brazil, and I see a lot of poverty there, although I went to do a fellowship. And uh, I, I promise, promise you I will be very, very brief. My mother used to say uh, that you are the owner of your silence and the slave of your own words, so I will be very short. Uh, I will talk from my heart. Uh, I think that, the, in my view, the, the best way to honor uh, uh, Dr. Abdul is, although I call him by his first name, although I never get the privilege to know him personally, it, it was going to happen through Harry and through this India 2020. But he will believe that worth with no action are empty. So the best way to honor him is take him where he left and uh, move India to the, the next level in terms of healthcare, education, and poverty. Um, uh, I just found out that I'm in the presence of Gandhi's grandson and uh, I, I want to mention a, I think a very important thing like when I was growing up I was very little and I read Gandhi's life I was uh, very young and uh, in my house in Argentina I have a, a newspaper from the, the day he, he died and this year I was lucky to to visit Professor Trivedi in Northern India, Amabar, and I have some time to visit where he, uh, where he used to meditate, and, and was uh, incredible because, uh, you know, we, I believe we are kids all our life, but when we are, when we are little, what we read uh, impact our life tremendously. And so when I visit where Gandhi used to meditate and the simplicity of his life, it, it, it came all together. And what I've seen in, in my youth, uh, I was uh, surprised how a simple man in some sense was complex in another. Everybody knows that he was a lawyer, and uh, was educated in England, practiced in South Africa. I'm sure you know his life better than I do. But that, his life was so powerful that change uh, through non-violence, a system that was almost unimaginable to change. But Gandhi used to say, my life is my message. So we, when we go back also, should look and see what we do really. Uh, our life has been our message. I am, um, through my life I received some awards and uh, sometimes they, interview you for hours and, and you question yourself what they are going to present with three hours of interview. And one, one of the awards that was given to me, and I'm not saying this to tell you that I'm wonderful, but I was surprised because in one of the things that I said is uh, that when I look back to my life, I want to see how many lives I have touched. And that was the only thing that they extracted after three hours of talking about I said, wow, I was, after speaking for three hours, you don't even remember what you have said, but I realized that they have extracted, no matter what I said before, the most powerful thing that I have said. And I think that this applied to Dr. Kalam. Um, his life is his message. When you go back and look, he has touched many, many lives, and he will touch lives in the future. And. Uh, I will tell you how I met Harriet Panapali because it's very, very intriguing and I will take 30 seconds more. Um, so I, I was staying in a hotel 
uh, and because it was the time of the diaspora, all the millionaires and billionaires were staying in the nicest hotel. And this hotel was not very nice. So I get to walk around and I see girls that were very young carrying bricks on their heads and sitting sad. And I was deeply touched. And then uh, I was uh, shortly before I leave, and I was in the plane, and Harry by, by chance came and sit uh, beside me. And we start talking, and I see this as an opportunity of uh, helping human beings and helping uh, those rural Indians that rural Indian that have no access to healthcare through telemedicine. And I think I'm committed to help and improve um, the life of everybody in India. And like Mother Teresa used to say, we cannot do big things, only small things with great love. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rio, for very interesting remarks. Thank you so much. Now, I request Nandu Balija to please come onto the stage a few words. And then we're going to call all the heads of the organizations uh, to come and make uh, brief remarks. My pronouns to all the dignitaries and the guests, especially my friend and my mentor, Dr. Inga uh, I'm, I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to carry the message from uh, the New Jersey Senator Sam Thompson and I personally met him, he called me, he couldn't able to come because he is not even in uh, New Jersey, but he sent his message, he regrets that he cannot be able to participate today and send his condolences uh, to Dr. Abdul And the only one thing I can share with you, I hear from the place in India where Abdul Kalam graduated in MIT. And I went to MIT inside the place where he studied. And uh, the same railway station which I used. That's the only uh, thing I can talk about Abdul Kalam because I came away to America when he hit that limelight. So it's a great soul when you read and there's some other interviews if you have seen in Indian channel, you can talk about how great in the heat dedicated. The simplicity was the only thing I can say. And he never been, even though such a great man. And we all, actually he followed, we all practice, we preach but we don't practice, but Dr. Abdul Kalam did practice. So we, I'm so happy, I can say a few words about him. Even though I better I'm worth talking about him, I don't know because I'm not that great man like him, I can't compare myself. And anyway, thank you very much, Hari uh, Garu and uh, Shibas Garu, they are doing a good job and they included me in that and I'm so happy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nandaji. Now, I just wanted to invite Vamsi to invite uh, Krishna Machari, he's a retired uh, Major General. He's going to talk about him. So, I'd like to introduce Major Krishna Kumar Rachani, the man who probably has the closest connection here to Dr. Kalam. He worked with Dr. Kalam directly in India in the Defense Research and Development Organization. He had first-hand experience in the Arjun Tank Project from 1992 to 1995. So without further ado, Dr. Krishna Kumar Achar. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, respected guests, Lead India 2020 team, uh, Dr. Hari Epanapalli, Srinivas Dhanagnoni, uh, Venki Saragopan, uh, Mr. Chubakula, and Mr. Rajmohan Gandhi. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I won't take much of the time as uh, the stage has already been set, not more than two minutes. But what I'll tell you today is uh, from my association and direct contact with Dr. Abdul Karam as soon as he became the scientific advisor to the Prime Minister of India in 1992. I was um, a young major with about uh, nine years of service in the Indian Army and I was a squadron 
major commander of a, a tank regiment. Um, I did my advanced uh, heavy vehicles technology engineering from the Institute of Defense Advanced Studies and I was posted as soon as Dr. Kalam took over as the scientific advisor and when the missile program had gone through successfully, he took upon him the challenge to see the two other key defense projects, the main battle tank Arjun and the light combat aircraft. These were the two pet projects that he adopted during that period of 92 to 95. And my first interaction in 1992, as soon as he took over as the scientific advisor, was uh, in Avadi, uh, which is near um, uh, Chennai, a town where you have the heavy vehicles factory which manufactures the tank. You have a DRDO lab called the Combat Vehicle Research and Development Establishment. I was a deputy project director and nominated from a tank regiment to help the scientists in doing the test and trials of the Arjun tank. I will only take, there are so many positive superlatives that can describe Dr. Abdul Kalam, but I will take one of them which is called simplicity. He is a human being whose simplicity personified, if I had to put it. This gentleman in almost around 60 degrees Celsius, 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the direct conversion, with tanks, engine revving almost boiling point temperature of 100 degrees Celsius, uh, not that he could not afford or his stature would, did not allow, but the gentleman when very simple shirt, trouser and a uh, chapel, Hawaii chapels. He wanted to get onto the tank with his size and with the kind of temperatures that were around. We told him, sir, we'll come down and we'll give you the introduction. He said, no, I want to understand what is inside this that I have to take to the ministry and everybody who's the decision maker to be able to position this equipment with the army. And then he told me, Major, you take me inside and you will not believe it. I mean, most of us who come from tank regiments are almost, if not fully baked, um, we are half baked. It's the kind of temperature that you have inside. And he came, he spent almost two hours understanding each and every part and also went with the tank, you know, we went over a lot of ditches and we were very worried that he might hit his head or injure himself, but he wanted to go through and understand what a Jawan sitting inside a tank goes through. That is the kind of simplicity that I have seen personally that I'm able to carry with me all these years and I'm really blessed and honored to have been associated with such a great human being. As I would put it, he was a Bharat Ratna, but all I can say is Bharat lost a Ratna. That is the kind of impact he left for generations of human beings, especially from our country, who have been associated or were born in his lifetime that he will be carrying and he will, has left a big mark on humanity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. General. Now, I request another person, Dr. Megraj, who worked with the Kalam. So, I want him to come up to the stage and say a few words. See, we cannot get to hear the first-hand information from Dr. Kalam, so we are very fortunate to have them here. Thank you, Srinivas. We have a host of dignitaries here, including HR Shah. Ram Redigar, who came all the way from Washington, D.C., and is a true admirer of Dr. Kalam, Dr. Perikari. And uh, I am honored to be 
be given a small opportunity to speak my heart regards to Abdul Kalam. When we think of Abdul Kalam, we have few parallels in the world. Now, for instance, Albert Einstein, he has given us the theory of relativity, the mass energy conversation, the great formula is E is equal to MC squared. And again, we have in our own New Jersey, a great personality, Thomas Alva Edison. Thomas Alva Edison has given light to the entire world. Not only that, he is the first man to ask everyone to use solar energy. He said, he described solar, what a, what a source of power. If anybody can tap in this world, the energy crisis is gone. That's what Thomas Alvoy Edison said. And now, when you look at our great nation of India, we have values which are we draw from our great saint Mahatma Gandhi. We are very fortunate that his grandson is present here among the audience today. He taught to the entire world the principles of non-violence, satyagraha. And he was way ahead of the times. And so was our Abdul Kalam. In his thought process, he was generations ahead of us. And when we look at the humanity, we had a great saint, saint in India by name Siddhi Sai Baba. He said, there is only one religion in the entire world and there is only one Almighty in this entire world. All these four people put together, we see the spark, the genius and the brilliance in none other than our Bharat Ratna, Abdul Kalam. Who said Dr. Abdul Kalam is no more? He lives in the hearts of 1.4 billion people, Indian people, living in India and abroad. Not only that, we have a team heading by none other than Hari Akunapalli, bearing his thoughts and spreading his vision to the entire world. Hari Garu, I really congratulate you for taking up such a big project and I wish you all success and see to it that his spirit lives. Well done, sir. Thank you, Dr. Meghraj Garu. Now I request Peter Kotargar to come onto the desk and say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. And I want to thank you, Harry and uh, Srinivasan, for giving me opportunity to say a few words. We all are here to mourn the losses of uh, our late president, APJ Abdul Kalam, and many leaders in their own ways have said wonderful things about our president. We all going to miss his legacy, not only India and Indian people, but throughout the world, he will be missed. And one quote, what is a uh, honorable grandson of uh, Mahatma Gandhi ji said he came from Muslim community and which is a very important for many people to know in today's current situation some people are misguided many Muslim hero has contributed in the freedom of India as well as development of India we all should remember and we should take out those forces doing something harm to our secular country, which is we must go to Abdul Kalam, we must go to Mahatma Gandhi, and if we really want to give a true tribute, then we must 
clean up our mind and must have secular India for long lasting. That is what my wishes is and I hope we all do something about it. Once again I want to thank Harry and Srinivasan and all the directors and uh, associated people for organizing such a memorial services on a short notice and bringing people together to remember our late president. Many leaders of India have left the legacy and one of the person who will be joining is our late president Abdul Kalam and uh, he as many say the simplicity and achievement he was a hero for our country mother India thank you thank you so much now I request Malik from TAPDB they drove all the way from Philadelphia Namaskar Rondi, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, as uh, many of the speakers here said, Kalam Garo was a man of simplicity and uh, he did the smallest things with great passion. And we, uh, we are, most of us were born and uh, living in two of the greatest democracies on the earth and both countries which prove that a person from the modest families can become the president of their countries, whether it is Abdul Kalam or uh, Mr. Obama. So let us all follow their values, which is simplicity, whether it is Martin Luther King or uh, Mahatma Gandhi Ji or Mother Teresa, as most of us said. So let's follow the path, their uh, values and try to make the smallest change in, a, in, in our uh, youth. So from our Telugu Association, what we are doing is we are doing in about three to four weeks, we are trying to encourage and engage our youth group to come up with a charity program and all the proceeds would go to either the Lead India or any one of the organizations which is working for empowering the youth. We, we would encourage all of you to come and participate and encourage our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Malik. There was a wonderful uh, talk that you are planning to do. And, uh, thank you. It's a great opportunity to be part of uh, Lead India. My beloved brother, Hari Kishan Ipanapalli, where he belongs to Karim Nagar district and uh, that's neighboring village, state of Telangana, in the 29th state of Telangana from Indian Union. Very proud. I have been a disciple, I can say, Haryana and uh, Srinivas Ganagoni. They are both uh, Ram Lakshman for the Lead India 2020. And uh, the visionary, now here we are talking about him, is the greatest personality on earth. It's not very really easy. Many people always preach, but not many people follow. He is the person with preaching and also follow. TDF USA, not going to preach, they are going to follow. The young organization, as an organization from Telangana region, we are going to work with Lead India. And uh, when Harikishan Garu approached us, Telangana Development Forum, we want to work with them in the next few years. We work with them and all the 10 districts, education, empowerment, all the contribution goes to through for education related Bharati project we introduced from TDF that will work with the high schools empowerment and school education. And hearts up to you the team that they are working sincerely and supporting Dr. Shanti. Marvelous qualities. And there were many that, do, uh, that Mr. Kalam demonstrated. One of them was his endurance. Even though he didn't pursue his dream of becoming an aeronautical engineer, he, per he persevered and believed, not knowing he would become the great visionary he is today. The next, another quality is the simplicity and humbleness which made him the people's president. After his term as President Kalam, uh, he, he, he uh, joined as a visiting faculty for many academic and research institutions across India. He was to meet the students and one could sense inexplicable excitement among them. And, and as many of you know, the, he continued doing this until his last breath. Dr. Kalam is also known for his impeccable vision. He had three visions for India. Freedom, respect, and uh, freedom, development, and uh, economic power. Even though Dr. Kalam is no longer with us, 
His ideology, vision, and inspiration will always remain. So let's pay our respects and tribute to this visionary by dreaming big and making that dream come true. Thank you to TV Asia Management and in particular to Mr. Shah for providing this wonderful facility. Thanks to Hyderabad House for providing snacks for this event. 